So in this section, we'll actually look at how do you construct a model. So we'll do it from scratch. Remember, our model is just a basic process flow for our business. So let's look at one of these processes, the mining process. This is an open pit mine. And how that works is you have a deposit where copper in this instance is located near the surface, but below what's called waste rock. So a truck would come in and it would shovel the waste rock away and then you'd need to access the copper ore. So you'd need to drill holes into the ore and you'd need to blast it with dynamite. And then the truck would be loaded with this ore and then this ore would be sent to a crusher where the large rock particles would be crushed to smaller rock particles. So knowing that that's the process flow on the mining side of things, let's first do our base year, which is 2020, and do that in yearly increments. And we'll drag that across for the life of mine up until 2040. We'll do pit number one. This is a mining operation with three pits. And then the important things for us to itemize are the amount of tons that we need to remove of waste rock. And then after we remove the waste rock, how many tons of actual copper ore are we removing after that? Now we need to itemize our costs in great detail. So we then need to estimate the distance between the pit where the copper is located and the crusher. So let's call that round trip distance. Okay, pit to crusher. So that's from the pit to the crusher and back. Okay, so let's start populating some of this. Now, assume that we've done all of this scientifically and we have a what's called a block model, which gives us an indication of our pit and what the optimal way to mine that pit would be. So let's just assume that we in the first year have to remove 50. Uh, thousand let's say kilotons of waste rock in order to access this copper ore so our units are kilotons we don't access any ore in that year in the following year let's assume we access 15,000 tons and just to keep the numbers simple uh, only 35,000 waste tons after that I'm just going to format the numbers so they're easier to read and then let's assume that all the waste is removed after that and we're just mining copper ore and 50,000 kilotons per year. Okay, in other words, 50 million tons per year. Okay, that's not going to drag across well. Let's just select that and drag that across. And then towards the end of the life of mine, let's just assume that we get less output. And that's our mining plan. So again, assume this is all scientifically driven. Uh, the round trip, it's half a kilometer at first because you're mining very close to the surface and it's a short distance. But as you progress, you get deeper and deeper into the pit. So it's now 600 meters and then 700 meters and it increases by 100 meters the distance you need to truck every year. Okay, just for simplicity's sake. We can then model um, our average load capacity per truck. And these are given to us by the truck manufacturer. Let's assume that in the first few years, we're going to use very big trucks to remove all this waste rock. And we can use very big trucks at first. But as we go deeper into the pit, there's less room to maneuver. So we have to transition to smaller trucks. And we continue in this fashion and the deeper we go we transfer to more small trucks and let's assume we stay at that size truck until the end of life of mine um, what we can also then model is the number of trucks in our fleet okay let's assume we have 15 to begin with and then we don't need that many, 12, uh, and we stay at 12. 
and then maybe transition it down to 10 because fewer trucks now can actually fit in this pit the deeper we go. So at this point, let's just maintain our color scheme. So all of these numbers have been hard coded from various geological and mining engineering reports. So we're just going to stick to our color scheme. We do our first calculation now and we could calculate the number of truck trips that we require per year. In order to move this ore and this waste rock to the crusher. How we do that, it's simply a sum function of all the rock that we have to move in the year. And we look at the capacity of each truck, but bearing in mind units, so our units are in kilotons, let's just convert all of our units to tons. Okay, so that's the total amount of rock that we have to move. This is the capacity per truck. And not only that, but we also have a certain number of trucks. So this gives us the number of trips that we need to make per truck per year. Okay, we can drag that formula across because it's a formula, it can just stay in white. Okay, um, we can also then calculate the number of mining days per year. Um, let's assume that due to rain issues, um, we can't mine for 365 days a year. Let's assume we just mine for 300 days a year because on heavy rain days, the the, the pit would need to be um, cleared from excess water and it would need to be pumped away. So let's assume we have about 65 to 66 interruption days per year. So now we know how many truck trips per year. We can then derive or deduce how many truck trips per day from that data. So again, this was a hard coded number, so I'll just stick to the color scheme. The number of truck trips per day is just the number of truck trips per year divided by the number of days we mine in the year. Drag that across. Okay. Um, now let's see what the total distance we truck per year. We know how many truck trips we make in a day and we know what the average distance is in that year okay so we can then say let's just first do a total distance that is just the number of truck trips times by the average length of a truck trip We'll drag that across as well. And that is actually per year. So we still have to multiply that by the number of days that we mine in a year. Okay, so that's the total distance that we truck per year. So once we're at this point, now we can start to factor in what this means for our cost structure. If we have the diesel cost per kilometer and assume that we are incurring this cost in South African Rand, okay, and let's assume that for these big trucks, uh, it costs you 10 Rand per kilometer and then we can then calculate the total diesel cost for the year by multiplying the total distance trucked in the year with the diesel cost per kilometer to find our average diesel cost per year. Okay, We can then drag this formula across and then we have our first cost line item for mining. Okay. So now we've got our first cost line item, which is the total cost of diesel. 
I'm just going to resize these columns so that we can view that. Okay, and what we can then do is um, this is the cost in rands. I can just convert that to millions of rands. So you can just divide this by one, two, three, one, two, three millions of rands. And we can get our total cost per annum for diesel. And we've got a lot of interesting information here as well. Um, number of truck trips per day. We can use this to schedule the number of truck drivers that we need to pay. So 31 truck trips, if we say that each truck driver should only be doing 10 trips a day, then we've got three truck drivers on average, three to four that we need to hire during this period, maybe five to six. And this information is very useful for us. Um, but uh, we won't go into that now. What we'll do instead is we'll look at some other costs that are also incurred. So we could say explosives. Maybe explosives cost you on average uh, per ton. They cost you, let's say, 500 rand of explosives per ton that you are going to move. Okay, so let's, <clears throat> let's assume that that goes up by inflation. What we need to then do is we just need to insert some more cells because we're going to include an inflation um, factor here and we can pull that from our economic assumptions tab so we go to our economic assumptions and we have our producer price inflation index which is just a proxy for the average increase in manufacturing costs over a given year we can drag that across and we can say that explosives this year were 500 rand per, uh, did I say ton? Yeah. Um, since we're dealing in kilotons, we'll just have to multiply that by 1,000. Let's deal in kilotons. And we just multiply that by 1,000, gives us 500,000 rand per kiloton. And we want to inflate this at this PPI index. So we say it's the previous year inflated at this year's PPI inflation. And then we can just drag that across. And then let's always just bear in mind that we have to um, maintain our formatting. So just make this a bit more legible. Take away the decimal points. And we can also shade um, this diesel cost. Uh, sorry, the, which one was a hard coded? Yeah, diesel cost per kilometer. Okay, we can shade that because it was hard coded. Okay, so we have our explosive cost per kiloton and then we can have our total explosive cost and that would just be our cost per kiloton multiplied by the number of kilotons moved which is the sum of the waste rock and the ore tons and we want this to be in million rand units. So this is our cost per, uh, this is our explosive cost. Okay. And uh, we can just make that more legible. So again, um, I have done this already. And it is in the mining assumptions tab. And I've done it for pits one, pits two, and pit three. And I've included a whole host of other assumptions. You'd need to itemize every single cost for every single step in the process of your business. So if you're running a restaurant, all of the raw materials that you purchase, you'd have to itemize them one by one and itemize how they're used and when they're used. So this takes great planning and this should be done internally over a process lasting a couple of months if necessary, where you sit down with every single division or department within your business. Or if you're a sole trader, you really sit down and you look at every single thing that you spend money on in your business and you itemize it uh, chronologically according to the process flow of your business. And you then look at how these links in the process flow fit together. After you've done that for mining, in my case, I also send my ore to a plant. So after the plant gets the rocks that have been crushed you also then have to process it and I have uh, certain consumables such as ball mills 
uh, which we'll discuss uh, in a bit more detail a bit later on. My hours, plant capacity, and basically I've itemized every single link in the chain, and then I arrive at this mining operations tab.